the biggest challenge you're facing these days to try and get more shows off? The here's the hard, here's the biggest challenge, folks. We did a lot of stuff on YouTube. We did a lot of stuff uh, uh, web series wise. We did we set records for crowdfunding. We did a web series and blah 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 blah. Who cares? Nobody gives a shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Sorry. Here's 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 the here's the hard lesson that I've learned over the last few years, which is context is everything. If if we decided to split off back in 2012, let's say, and there's a mul- alternate version of of us, right? And, and they're also having a podcast right now. Alternate <laughs> versions of us where we all decided to go down the direct-to-DVD horror movie route, which we were all embroiled in back in around 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. And we decided to all just be like, fuck it, let's make movies, feature films that are cheap and can turn a profit. Those alternate rally versions of ourselves are having a better career in Hollywood right now than us. Because yeah. the fact is... When people look at your past work, they say they look at our stuff and they're like, "Oh, you guys have done some stuff on YouTube." What YouTube? The thing where that that guy uh, recorded a video of a of a dead dude. V- oh, YouTube, the thing my kid watches, and it's like there's that what PewDiePie and he like talks. Oh, he, what? Yeah, the stigma's never left. The stigma's never left. So anything you've done in this context, nobody cares because at the end of the day, there's only two things that matter in doing stuff in the traditional Hollywood sense, which is did you make anyone any money? Did you win anybody any awards? Mm-hmm. And again. Right. In the traditional sense, people are like, well, don't do the traditional sense. It's like, well, but like f- it's easier said to be like, oh, just don't do it traditionally, because fundamentally there's a lot of things when you get into the details of it that still tie you to some degree of traditional like uh, approach. For example, if you said don't do it traditionally, well, you could go anywhere. Cool. Where are you getting actors? Because like it or not, every actor knows that money is in Los Angeles. That's how they can make a living. They can get a commercial. They can get roles in Los Angeles. So the Los Angeles is kind of where actors need to be. So if you're going anywhere else and you want to use any actor, you're either pulling from your local population who, if they're good, they probably got into Los Angeles, or you have to fly them from out from Los Angeles, which is just an additional cost that you're just paying now in order to handle that, right? So, it was, and there's a lot of stuff like that, right? It's crew. It's, you know, sure, you can shoot anywhere, but crew, cast, a lot of these sort of like the fun, you can't make a movie without, I mean, you know, you need movies for the most part, you need people. <laughs> uh, and so those, those sort of modes are sort of like kind of set. And yeah, you could, again, Tyler Perry has done this to an amazing extent, right? He's set up in Georgia and he's like, I'm doing my own thing. I'm making my own studio in Georgia. I'm doing all this. And he was able to do that. Right. He also made, he also, before he did that, he made a bunch of movies that made a bunch of money um, and were profitable. So it's that's the that's the hard part right now is that we're I feel like I always feel like we're in between we're in between the world like I feel like I have more experience behind camera and I have more experience like directing actors and doing that work than most people walking into Sundance and selling their movies but that experience is meaningless unless it's applied in that context in that sort of other other way so in a weird way it feels like when we're talking about doing a feature film we're talking about TV even though we did like a couple of Hulu shows right. But you did a couple of Hulu shows, but the way that that world works is like too bad you're not, you know, some name, some known showrunner, and you didn't get tons and tons. Of, your shows didn't get all, you know, four fifth seasons. Mm-hmm. You're not known in that way. It's harder for you to, to 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 put yourself out there like that. So when we talk about even feature films, it's like nobody's walking up to us and being like, "Here's a movie we want you to direct." That's like, no, 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 no. You as far as as far as those people are concerned, we're unproven entities. Mm-hmm. So in a way, it feels a lot like we're back at square one, having to prove ourselves. We're back at square one with actual experience, and I think that's helpful, right? More, way more so than anyone else. If you know, if we were coming in new to it, but it does feel like we got to kind of prove ourselves all over again, right? I'm sure you guys have sort of felt that a little bit to an extent, oh, yeah. right? Which is maybe kind of what's kept us doing YouTube is because part of me doesn't like the idea of going out there and trying to like scratch it from the dirt again you know yeah i kind of want to i can do whatever i want here right right right, right. to a degree you know obviously i get the lights on but i can make videos and I, right. they can be my videos and i can control when they come out and what they're going to be and my budgets aren't big but at the same time i still have plenty of resources that would otherwise be expensive if i was starting from actual nothing. from actual scratch yeah. right yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um and maybe like when i look back at our past experiences doing long form content you know the ones that stand out are Rush, Battlefield Rush, right, and Lifeline. And they both had their variety of challenges, but <clears throat> Rush was honestly a, a bunch of fun. Um, yeah. The challenge with Rush was the Battlefield IP. Right, um, right, 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 right. Which fell apart at the last second. 
That's why it's inspired by Battlefield. It was also, yeah, it was just a constant strain on the production from from day one. Well, because at the end of the day, you're you're like it or not, right? You're secretly doing a commercial, right? yeah. Because that's the the brand world which has evolved over the years. But that's what that ends up being, and so you're still beholden to those needs and their, right. and their and their requests, which oftentimes has very little to do with. They want to sell a video game. They don't want to make a cool movie. Exactly. It's it's hard to put your months, if not years, of work at the whims of some marketing director that's on the yeah, other side of the fair. world. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but generally speaking, that project was still solid, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I think the end product was good too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lifeline was a bit of a different story. Um, it still has its you know its moments, but Lifeline was very much like in the traditional system, right? And like really turned me off to the traditional system. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a desire to go back to doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, Even though I have a desire to make movies and shows, I just, not like that. Yeah. yeah, We we, we just, I mean, we've said this story on the podcast before, but really we got burned because the camera union (laughs) wouldn't let us touch the cameras. And we're like, it's going to be a YouTube channel, you you know, YouTube. (laughs) And they're like, nope. Yeah, so yeah, kinda, yeah. They're like, oh, really? It's like it's so sour, you know. Yeah, we saw that. We saw that on Dimension Four Hundred Four to an extent too, right? Like, and 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 at the end of the day, like, right? Like, I I joined the editors guild in order to edit, right? And it was one of those Amazing. things where, and it was one of those things where I was like, yeah, you know, and I think even Senzaki had to join the um, sound editors guild as well, you know. Uh, so you know, I think I think that there's there's always going to be. It's a question of how you want to play ball, and and I think what I found though is it all comes down to money. If something's expensive, depending on your right point of view, but like if something's expensive, the more expensive it gets, the harder it is for you to do your own thing. Yeah. The cheaper it is, the more likely you are to do your own thing. Right. But then it's cheaper, so you have to kind of be scrappier in that sense. So when I even talk about you know feature films, we're in that mode of like, okay, it's got to be cheap. It's got to be like a one location kind of thing, which is where I think Joe, uh, Mr. Guitar Man, to go to bring this all the way around was brilliant, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Brilliant in being like, cool, his movie out the gate is a is one that he can – manage it's one that from a from a cost standpoint is 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 workable right it's not a big sprawling epic whatever it's like no 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 make a movie that get a base hit right mm-hmm. make a movie that is solid that can make its money back that is what sets you up to be able to 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 continue that career right you don't go up there and just swing for the fences on your first time out it's like get a base hit prove that you can do this and then you can find that later but that's again that's a journey and that's a process and that's one that you know i think for i think that for me it is why i got into making videos and movies and stuff in the first place and the taste of what because i think i've i've had i've had the taste of what it could be whereas i think when we got to like video game high school season three and even like the hulu shows i was like oh it can be like this it now with caveats with parameters but we got to that point where like yes it can actually feel loose in a way that you know we like uh and 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 you know i wasn't necessarily turned off by it there were parts where i'm like this doesn't make sense and i don't like this i understand what the logic is and that logic may be applied 10 years ago but it certainly doesn't make sense now but you know again i think it, it, to me it was it's part of the challenge of it and something that i uh, i kind of wanted to get into you know yeah did you find this clip interesting did you like this highlight well guess what There's a whole bunch more where that came from in the entire podcast episode. You should go listen to it. It's on our CorridorCast channel or anywhere podcasts are found. You know, places like Spotify, iTunes, all that kind of stuff. It's the CorridorCast. Check it out.